Good morning. It's a privilege to be here with you today. Wow. If you had told me 10 years ago that I'd be traveling the world, doing what I love, and speaking at amazing conferences like this one, I would have told you you were crazy. And not because I didn't believe it somehow, but I was faced with a lot of skepticism. I grew up rebellious, some might even say reckless. And if you, re uh, if you were rebellious too, you know it's because we have a lot to say. In fact, there is so much we want to say, we just don't know what it is. And I'm thankful to have found my passion early on um, and kept through it despite the skepticism. I love theater and I am fascinated with technology. I want to create experiences that catapult you into outer mental orbit. What can I say? I'm an astronaut in the closet. But in fact, what's most interesting for me about theater, what gets me most passionate about it, is the theater that doesn't exist yet because it's the exploration, the questions, the, the moments of discovery that keep me on my toes. We live in insanely interesting times, don't we? And I'm not even talking about politics. Let's just not go there. I'm talking about the interesting things, right? Today, scientists have created a physical model of a brain that can educate itself. Robots can learn from watching YouTube videos. We can already order self-driving vehicles in Pittsburgh and are promised flying cars in the next 10 years. Sign me up. The accelerated pace of change is causing a lot of scientific breakthroughs and human turbulence, right? Half of current jobs today are projected to be automated in the next 20 years. We don't really know what to make of this because we don't know what to do with this. What will we ask of technology once it frees us from the redundant tasks we've been indoctrinated to do for over a century? What will I ask of an artificial intelligence system once it can choreograph for me, design on the go, or rewrite a show at a click time? So we have reasons to be anxious about technology. But the truth and the irony is that we've been and still are the robots of an industrial age on the brink of a massive existential crisis facing the deepest philosophical questions ever at the dawn of a new age. But here's the good news. And Sergio, our host, talked a little bit about it. According to the World Economic Forum, the top three skills required by 20 20 will be complex problem solving, critical thinking, and creativity. Skills that will require humans to abstract, project, interpret, imagine. I believe we have an amazing opportunity here to snap out of our machine state and reclaim our creative intelligence. Picasso said, all children are artists. The problem is remaining an artist as we grow up. I love to exercise the theater of my mind and envision future possibilities because the world is a dynamic, connected, interactive stage, right? With a billion sensors and a hundred trillion sensors and a hundred billion connected devices, objects will develop personalities and talk to one another. 
Your door will anticipate your departure, miss you while you're gone, talk to the cocktail maker, and greet you accordingly. We'll wake up, step in our Shazam shower, hum a tune, and the music will accompany us organically. We'll be recording artists in the bathroom. Or imagine summoning the New York Philharmonic Orchestra on demand. A flock of musical drones land on your balcony playing Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. And when new realities start to superimpose themselves onto our own, when we begin to interact with the world's data, when the projected begins to affect the inanimate, because the inanimate is now alive, a whole new metaverse of possibility arises. Yes, the future that I envision is inevitably playful. But in the face of hunger, poverty, inequalities, disasters, corruptions, fake news, can I justify playing? I mean, I'm in the midst of my own existential crisis, re-questioning my purpose and passion, because as theater, as magical as theater is to me, is it still relevant? Or sustainable? One of the biggest problems I have, and that I experience often, is the waste of time, money, talent, sweat equity poured into productions that may live a day, a week, a month or more, if we're lucky, and in New York. And if those shows are any good, it will move you, provoke you, affect you. But here you are, gone already, back, back to your life, your family, your inbox, your duties. All that potential, gone. So, if we're going to spend all this creative equity, all this talents, money and time, can we leverage the transformative power of the theatrical experience for good? Can a show transcend its physical space? Can actions taken during a show affect the world outside? I'm currently developing a new production. It's called Billion Billions. I had to think big. It's a roller coaster through time in real time, right? So every performance will be different because the world's data now becomes the environment that performers interact with. We're using mobile technology and real-time data to create a show that responds to world events and where you, the audience, can respond back. So imagine watching a scene that features climate change, right? The wind machines are blowing, the music is speaking, performers flying, real-time statistics have mapped the entire stage. It's cathartic. Beat. Your phone lights up and invites you to donate to an organization tackling that challenge. There you've done it. You took action. It was simple, meaningful, and entertaining. And that is what I'm excited about, bridging the best of showmanship, technology, and social impact. And that's just the beginning, really. The symbiosis of arts and technology will create new form-function equations altogether. When traditional art forms like dance, music, theater, visual arts become multifunctional, and the various functions of technology will find new forms through the arts. Because we are sensorial human beings, we want to experience, we want to play. But what's perhaps more important today is not so much the outcome, what artists do or don't. What's interesting today is the process. Because we are being challenged by a whole new world. 
And I don't think it's technology. It's our imagination, which we often picture as a light bulb, right, flashing above our heads, a lucky stroke of insight. Eureka! It just happened! No. Imagination is an instrument, like a piano, a keyboard, a computer, that we've been given permission to play and practice. And by practicing it, we become more imaginative. It's about the power to disassociate the linear and literal and allow our minds to create new associations, which triggers new ideas, yes, often incongruous and bizarre and crazy, yet here we are, in a moment of total possibility, suspended into disbelief, driving at 30 billion metaphors per second, because that's how many metaphors our brains can perceive per second. It's like speeding up a stream of consciousness where our minds compute, decompute, recompute combinations in the background, and we just stop judging it. Today we are demanding solutions. And demanding solutions requires identifying the problem, and coming up with radical ideas that create positive change. In fact, we are summoning the spirits of innovation. And innovation requires creativity, and creativity is sparked through artistic processes. Instead of demanding solutions, we should curate creative collaborations and look at the arts as one part of the solution. Leverage the artistic processes as a catalyst to better innovate. Because we're neither left-brained or right-brained, we are one-brained. And our one brain thinks through different modalities. Albert Einstein said that the theory of relativity occurred to him by intuition and that music was the driving force. His discovery was the result of a musical perception. Let's infuse the arts in laboratories, research centers, companies, ideas centers, schools, somewhere between science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and vice versa. <clears throat> There's an amazing woman I just found out about. Her name is Merit Moore. She's a ballerina and a physicist. And she says that physics makes her a better dancer and dance a better physicist. And that should be more of the norm, because you need the creative brain in the lab to think out new ideas, and you need the analytic brain in the dance studio to figure out your center of mass. There is a method to the madness. It starts by playing senselessly, moving out of our bodies, getting out of our heads, observing and questioning everything, dismantling the systematic, having ideas, experimenting and improvising until we get it right. It starts by never giving in to failure and never giving up to people's skepticism. It means being and thinking out of the ordinary. We don't have a lot of time to wake up, but we all have the creative potential in us to thrive. We are entering a new economy, it's a creative one, and all of us here have the power to input whatever we want in it. The world is being digitalized, new tools are being demonetized and democratized, we have an amazing opportunity here to snap out of our machine state, stop being the robots of the industrial age, and finally be the artist we were always meant to be, through whichever medium it may be. So give yourself permission 
to be out of the ordinary. <laughs>